Okay, so, I mean, as we've seen so far in chapter 10, we're dealing with motion in a plane. And for the most part, we've needed uh, two components to describe the motion. We needed a component in the x direction, a component in the y direction. So, um, in order to describe these vectors, we, we, need, we can use either rectangular coordinates, x and y. Okay, that's what we're used to. Um, where, is the, where is this position um, in the x and the y? And then that's its position. And if you would draw a, a vector, you would draw it from the origin to p. That would be your vector, your position vector. Okay? Another way is to do polar coordinates, is to use polar coordinates where you've got um, r, which is the length there, that's your radius r, and your theta. You've got a radial coordinate r, and you've got an angular coordinate theta. And so r is just simply the positive, because it's always a, uh, uh, it's a magnitude, okay, it's never negative. It is equal to x squared plus y squared, so it's x squared plus y squared square root, square root of the x squared plus y squared. And then the angle is equal to arctan of y over x. Okay, pretty straightforward. And then your x component would then be r cos theta, and y would be r sine theta. Okay? In terms of rectangular coordinates, okay, we've looked at, um, now we looked at the polar coordinates. In terms of rectangular coordinates, you can represent your position vector in this way, xi plus yj, where x is the value of your x component, and i is, a, is our unit vector in the i direction. So there you've got like a magnitude, and you've got um, you've got your vector, and then this is the y component. Y is the scalar value times the j unit vector, which is the unit vector along the y axis. Okay, i and j represent unit vectors along the x and y axes, respectively. Remember that i and j. Um, it's not your deep water hake, um, you know. It's it is th these are your unit vectors in the in the x and y direction. They've got magnitudes of one, and the direction in the x and y respectively. Okay. So if you've got a vector a and you want to decompose it into its components, you can decompose it in this way. Remember that you there's your vector. You draw a line straight down there, f um, parallel to this y-axis until it cuts the x-axis. And so you've got your ax. There's your ax, your x component. And then that, there, we go, there you have your y component. And then an, again, if you want to further decompose this, you get axi plus ayj. Okay? Then if you want the magnitude, if you want the magnitude of your vector, again, ax squared plus ay squared, the positive square root. And if you want the angle, then it's going to be a tan theta equals ai. Okay? If you want to calculate that angle, it is tan theta is equal to ay divided by ax. Or rather, theta is tan to the minus 1 of ay over ax. Okay, and then finally, um, this is very, very helpful. If you want to add vector A to vector B, we know that you can take vector B and place the tail of B on the head of A, and you're going to get a resultant vector, vector sum, A plus B, okay? However, the way that we can do it here is we can take A and break it up into its x and y 
And we can take B and also break it up into its X and Y. And we can add AX plus BX right along the X axis. And we can add up AY and BY. And we would get the same thing. Can you see that RX is AX plus AX plus BX? And, and RY is AY plus BY. And so that's what we have here. So this is very handy if you've got two vectors, you want to add them up. Um, you can break them up into X and Y, then add up the two X components in the I direction and add up the two Y components in the J direction. All right.